hello hi everyone and welcome to this session uh, hello yeah so we are live now and can someone please confirm if i'm properly audible hello hello hi hi anushka hi shubham am i properly audible good evening neeraj i hope i am properly audible just put a yes hi hi mohammad hasim good evening good evening chandan okay thank you neeraj for confirming so hi hi okay 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 thank you thank you hi jasmine hi neeraj hi sumit okay so hi everyone so let me give you a brief intro about myself hi mohit so my name is karan mashru and i have done my btech in computer engineering from nit surat and uh, after that i worked with multiple companies like paytm uh, decimal point analytics newton school etc and at present i am working at geeks for geeks as an associate mentor okay and in today's uh, session we, i will be uh, discussing a brief roadmap for the dsa and then at the end i will also do a small q and a so if you people have any doubts you can ask me okay hi rohit hi priyanshu hi kaushik good evening everyone so i think a lot of people have joined so let's begin so first of all let me just uh, share my screen uh, okay i hope my screen is visible can someone please confirm is my screen properly visible hi gaurav hi abhishek yeah i think it's visible right great great thank you thank you thank you abhishek thank you priyanka thank you rohit mohit so uh, first of all let us start by answering this question see whenever you are learning any new topic you should be answering two questions what is that topic about and why you need to learn okay yeah thank you for confirming guys so what is the meaning of data structures and algorithms so in simple terms data structures means different structures to store different type of data on the computer depending upon the application right algorithm means a, a specific predefined number of steps which you a predefined steps which are used to solve a particular problem okay so there are different data structures and different algorithms which you can use to solve particular problem okay now why should we learn it so the first thing is see when you are solving a particular uh, problem using computer so two points are very important first is time and another is memory okay why time because let's say you are purchasing something on amazon okay so you added the items on card and then you clicked on proceed to payment now if it takes 10 minutes to go to proceed to payment amazon will lose a lot of its customers right so we need things to run fast another is uh, sorry uh, one is time and one is memory okay i think i said something else another is uh, memory so uh, memory is also important why because there is limited memory right you cannot use a lot of memory so depending upon the application and depending upon the uh, application and depending upon the question asked you use optimal data structure and algorithm so that you can solve that problem in minimum amount of time and using minimum amount of memory okay so that's the first thing what are data structures algorithms and why you should learn it okay now let's move further so as i said data structures is a uh, different structures to store different types of data and algorithms are a well defined sequence of operations to solve a problem what are the motivations to learn 
first is you solve real world problems okay as i said uh, now uh, why real world problems i will also give you two examples after this so it will be more clear okay because in data structures algorithms you solve small problems but when you are making some big applications you can integrate those small solutions in it okay second is uh, you develop problem solving skills and critical thinking so basically when you are given a particular problem and you need to convert uh, solve that problem by writing a code it will develop your problem solving ability and it will also develop your critical thinking and this is what companies are looking for that's why companies ask dsa a lot and uh, hence uh, the third point that you can get hired at top companies right the fourth is uh, you need you learn to trade off between time and space in computer okay so as i said time and space are most important in computer so you can decide and choose the optimal solutions which uses as less memory as possible and it takes as less time as possible right fifth one is you easily adapt to a new tech stack once the basics are clear see data structures algorithms are is the most fundamental thing once that is clear then uh, like if you learn monstack or spring boot or uh, django then these things are quite easy once you learn the basics and fundamentals then uh, learning these things you just need to know the syntax and then uh, once you are clear with the syntax you can uh, proceed with it easier you can uh, uh, apply complex things in that uh, tech stack also okay so this is the last thing right now let's move further these are two real life examples of data structures and algorithms for example there is one algorithm called binary search as you can see on the left hand side so what is binary search for those of you who do not know let me give you a brief idea it is an algorithm to search elements now suppose you are given a sorted array shorted list of elements okay the uh, integers are shorted in increasing order and if i ask you tell me whether 38 is present in the array or not then one approach would be to traverse the complete array if you find 38 at any position you return true otherwise you return false okay so you need to traverse the complete array so if there are n elements you need to traverse the complete list but what you can do is see your array is shorted consider the complete array pick the middle element of the array suppose the middle element is 50 now 50 is greater than 38 and the array is shorted so all the elements to the right of 50 will also be greater than 38 so you can ignore the complete part on the right hand side of 50 and now consider only on the left hand side of 50 now for that left hand side portion again pick the middle element suppose that middle element is 25 so 25 is less than 38 now 25 is less than 38 and array is shorter so again you can ignore the complete left part of 25 because those values will also be less than 25 now you have a very small range of elements and you can keep repeating this process so this will take log n amount of time okay we will not go in proof but uh, suppose there are 64 elements then your first approach will take 64 steps and this will take how much only six steps six to seven steps are you getting my point so this is much faster so the example given here is uh, phone's contact book okay so for example if you have stored contacts uh, you have a lot of contacts in your phone right so they are shorted alphabetically right so you want to search whether a particular name is present or not you can apply binary search similarly for dictionary the words are stored in shorted order right for dictionary there is another data structure try which you can use but there is also binary search which you can do okay there is another example given on the right hand side for example you have data of thousands of cities and thousands of roads connecting them okay now you are asked to find the minimum distance between city a and city b okay so how can you do that so what you can do is for uh, there are different algorithms like floyd warshall algorithm uh, then um, bellman ford algorithm etc which are used here okay so i have taken a small uh, screenshot for example if you have uh, the cities are represented using circles so if you have cities 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and the lines connecting the cities are roads connecting them okay and the number written on the lines are the between of that road 
So for example, between one and two, there is a road whose distance is eight units. Okay. So uh, this is basically a small example. Now, if someone asks you to find the minimum distance between city one and city five, so there are multiple paths which go from city one to city five, you need to tell the minimum one. Okay. So this is an example where you have different algorithms which you can use. Okay. Let's move further. So what is the first step in learning DSA is see in DSA basically you will be given problems which you need to write the code for and then uh, uh, you uh, solve that problem using that code. Okay. So the for to write code the first step is to learn a programming language. So the first step to any uh, to roadmap of DSA is learning a programming language. Okay. Now you can use any language like C, C++, Java, Python, JavaScript, etc. But C++, Java or Python are the most preferred. Okay. Why? Because C is very basic and for complex problems, it becomes difficult to implement using C. Okay. And in C++, Java and Python, there are built-in libraries available, which makes the task very easy. Okay. Uh, there are built-in functions available which you can directly use. Hence, uh, C++, Java and Python are uh, better than uh, C. Okay. And why not other languages? Because, see, usually companies will allow all the languages, like all the famous languages, but C++, Java and Python is always present. Okay. So if you are sitting for a technical interview or sitting for a coding round of a test of a company, these three languages will always be there. Okay, that's why learning one of the three is quite important. Okay, and unless and until company is hiring for a very specific role, for example, if they are once I saw a company hiring for a Kotlin developer role and they were uh, they gave a test in which you can attempt only in Kotlin. Okay, so that's a different thing, but otherwise, these three languages will always be there. Okay, now these are some of the points which you need to keep in mind while learning a programming language. First is uh, First is uh, you do not need to go in too much depth of the language. Okay, uh, like uh, I have seen this people making this mistake. They'll keep on learning the language a lot. That will take a lot of time. You just need to learn the basics and then start solving problems. Okay, so don't just keep on learning the language. Sometimes people learn some basic language and then they are not much confident and they again start with zero. No. Learn the language, start solving problems. If you face difficulty, Google things out. And in this way, you will also solve problems and you, your language will also become better. Okay. So the third point, applying is the best way of learning. Okay. So just learn the basics of a particular language and then start solving problems. Okay. Now for those of you who are absolute beginners in DSA, let me show you how a DSA problem looks like. Okay. So that you have a clear idea of what I'm talking about. So for example, this is a very basic question uh, on uh, Geeks for Geeks platform. So here, this is the name of the question. This is the level of the question. This is the accuracy out of total submissions. Uh, this much accuracy is passing. These are the total number of submissions. And these are the total points which you get if you solve this problem. Now, since this is a school level problem, so the points which you get is zero. Okay, in case of uh, uh, harder level problems, you get points, but for school level, you do not get. Okay, so this is the uh, Geeks for Geeks platform. Okay, on other platform, there might be some different system of pointing and etc. But more or less, the outlook will be same. Okay. Uh, so uh, here you can see uh, this is the name of the problem. This is the description of the problem. Then there are some few examples for you to understand the description better. And then this is the task which they have said you need to complete. Then there are constraints regarding the variables and then there are expected time and space complexity. Okay, this is the first topic which you learn in DSA if, when you learn. Okay, then there are topic tags available. So from which topic this question is, okay. Then on the right hand side, you can see there is a compiler. So uh, from here, you can select the language in which you want to write the solution code and you can write the solution code here. Okay. This is the average time taken to solve this problem. This is the timer, which you can start to note down your time, how much you take. These are some more buttons, which you can just explore. Then compile and run. If you have written your code and if you want to test it, you can click on compile and run, which will test on a small input. And then you can click on submit for uh, it to check on bigger values. Okay. 
yeah so uh, that will be uh, when you click on submit uh, it will run on all the different test cases so that's another thing uh, now let us go through this problem so we know what to do okay you will have a better idea so here it is said that you are given an array of size n i hope you people are familiar with array so there are n elements in the array and the name of the array is a you need to print the elements of a in alternate order starting with index 0 what is the meaning of alternate order print the element at 0 index leave the element at 1 index print the element at 2 index leave the ele uh, element at 3rd index print the element at 4th index and so on okay so for example in this you need to print 1 and 3 here you need to print 1 3 and 5 okay so what I did here, I took one variable i and then I traversed over the array starting with index 0. But every time I was increasing my index by 2. So first of all, I will print a of 0, then I will print a of 2, then I will print a of 4 and so on. Okay. So if I click on compile and run, it will run on the basic test case. And when I click on submit, it will run on bigger test cases. Okay. Right. Sometimes it might happen that when you click on compile and run, it gets accepted. But when you click on submit, it does not get accepted, right? Uh, because the, for larger test cases, it might fail. So that's uh, about uh, this. Uh, now, let, that is a basic, very basic DSA question. Okay, there are actually very advanced questions other than that. Now, let's move forward. So these are the topics which are important with respect to placements okay so that is analysis of time and space arrays matrices strings stack queue tree linked list graph try segment trees distances these are the data structures and these are the algorithms like searching shorting hashing greedy recursion backtracking and dynamic programming and then there are some maths algorithms which deals with maths problems now this is just an overview uh, for example in graphs you will have specific graph algorithms as well okay So how can you learn a new topic? So if you are learning DSA, you learn this topic, these things, uh, these topics one by one. So how can you learn a particular topic? You learn the theory of that topic, you solve standard problems, and then you can practice 20 or 30 more questions on that topic, okay? Which will give you a good amount of confidence and you will solve a variety of questions, right? These are some of the resources which you can follow. Like there are YouTube channels which are Geeks for Geeks Practice. Then there is Driver. Then there is Love Babbar. Aditya Verma is famous for dynamic programming. CS50, MIT Open Courseware, Code Library, and PTL Abdul Bari. Then there are articles like Geeks for Geeks, Hacker Earth, and CP Algorithms are the platforms from where you can learn the articles uh, from articles. Okay, and. Uh, there are a lot of other resources also okay these are the, some of the which i mentioned here now if you want to practice questions there are different platforms like geeks for geeks code forces code chef hacker Earth, lead code etc okay now this is uh, some other things which you can follow so for example if you have learned uh, a good amount of dsa then uh, you can start solving problem of the day potd to remain consistent means uh, on different sites like Geeks for Geeks, Lead Code, uh, every day one problem is released. And if you remain consistent for a certain amount of time, you will get some points and rewards. So you can follow that. Then there is SD sheet, which contains a set of interview centric questions. So basically SD sheet is a crisp amount of questions, which are most helpful for the, uh, which are most helpful for your uh, uh, placements. It's like a last time revision material, okay? And third is weekly coding contest. So there are contests held weekly on different platforms like Geeks for Geeks, Code Forces, Code Chef, Lead Code, etc., in which you can participate. And the advantage of participating in them is that you also remain consistent and uh, it uh, gives you an environment of real time competition. Like uh, when there will be a real time competition, when you will participate in it, uh, you will. Uh, like uh, for a coding test of a company, you will be in competition, right? So there will be a pressure on you. So this will give you a feeling of that. Okay. That's why uh, it is very important. These are some more points which you need to keep in mind uh, uh, in order to uh, while learning DSA. First is be patient. It takes time. Okay. It's uh, not that you will get it within five, seven days. You will come in flow. Okay. So you need to be patient. Second is there will be many ups and downs. What do I mean by that? See, after you solve a particular level of problems, you will get stuck. 
then in order to raise the bar you will have to uh, stay consistent and uh, keep solving problems in order to bring your level to the next level okay so there will be many ups and downs in your journey so you uh, must uh, be uh, you know uh, be ready for that and this comes in everyone's journey third is don't focus more on participating in contest and ratings during the initial phase on learn of learning focus more on learning what do i mean by this see there are weekly coding contest held on different platforms which i told now when you participate in those contests uh, your ratings are increasing and decreasing on those platforms as per your performance okay so it will give you a thrill so i have seen a lot of beginners who participate in competitions a lot but who have not learnt many things and when they participate a lot in competitions but not learnt many things then they are their ratings will not increase much are you getting my point so their rating is also not increasing and the time which they invested in learning new uh, in participating in competitions they could have invested in learning new things right so uh, in the initial phase of uh, dsa don't focus on participating in contest okay focus on uh, learning more fourth is up solving is more important than participating in contest okay what do i mean by this many people in order to increase their ratings they keep on participating in contest regularly but they do not up solve up solve means for example when you participated in a contest and there are five problems out of that you solve two now for the remaining three questions at least solve one after the competition it will give you more knowledge okay that is called up solving fifth is uh, you can make a group of friends and do programming together it will give you a push okay sixth is be consistent and keep discussing because uh, if you are not consistent after a certain amount of time you will forget old things then you need to repeat the things okay so be consistent seventh is you need to spend a considerable amount of time in each question in the beginning okay so when you are a beginner if you as a beginner you should not directly see the solutions or video solutions immediately that will not help your brain to grow or your thinking to grow so spend a considerable amount of time on each question in the beginning okay and yes if you have decided to learn something new this new year then this can give you a lot of motivation geeks for geeks has come up with a 390 challenge where if you purchase a course from the platform between 1st january 2024 to 31st january 2024 and if you are able to complete 90% of the course within 90% 90 days or from the date of purchase then you will get 90% refund okay of the uh, amount that you have paid so this can give you a lot of motivation and this new year if you have decided to learn some new things then definitely you can try this out and complete the course within 90 days to get 90% refund complete 90% of the course okay and you can also keep us updated on different social media platforms about your status how much you have completed using the hashtag commit with gfg yeah so that's all about the road map to dsa and now i feel free to ask any questions i will be more than happy to answer the questions any questions guys please ask okay raja welcome mohammad raja thank you welcome ओके अभिषेक वेलकम या गाइस इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस और डाउट्स यू मे आस्क मी ओके हाउ मच टाइम इट टेक्स टू कंप्लीट द होल टीएसए आई वुड से इफ यू आर अ बिगिनर एंड इफ यू स्टे कंसिस्टेंट देन 6 टू 8 मंथ्स इज अ गुड अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम टू कम टू अ गुड लेवल ओके 
uh, detail explain of the course what is the syllabus and where can we get okay welcome Rohit welcome Sumit okay so uh, let me uh, share my screen and tell you a bit about the courses okay I hope my screen is visible so what you can do is you can just search GFG go to geeks for geeks site and then on this site you can go to courses and all courses okay here you can see the courses and here you can also click category wise courses and uh, yeah here you will get the details of the courses now if you want details of a particular course for example I went to data structures algorithms also you can search uh, from the year top bar also okay for example you went to data structures algorithms course so let's say you went to this course okay DSA for interview preparation so first of all this is an offline course here you can see offline course here you will get a basic description uh, the time duration is written here this is just uh, about the 90, 390 challenge and here you can see uh, uh, you can contact at this number for more details but here you can see some details as well for example what are the locations for Bangalore, Pune and Noida where you can attend the classes these are some of the people who got placed this is the course overview right uh, these are the key benefits for the course then uh, you can see 24 7 doubt support a certification expert mentors and job assistance here you can see the course content and yeah you can see the detailed syllabus here you can see the district instructor profile for this course I am only the instructor so here you can see my profile and my experience you can see a demo video and associated batches this person is for I think Pune so he is for Pune location and this person is for Bangalore batch okay so yeah that's for Bangalore batch you can see here there are more uh, you know details about uh, here there are more uh, reviews which you can see more testimonials this is the details about the upcoming batches uh, next starting in from fab from in noida and this is the bangalore batch okay and these are the frequently asked questions and uh, yeah so in this way you can get the details of the courses okay and i think you can also download the course brochure for uh, right from here so in that way when you go to the courses you can explore different courses okay tree karte karte demotivate kyu ho jate hai as i said there are different levels okay so at, uh, at every level you will get demotivated but if you push yourself a bit make peers okay make two or three people group it will push you a lot ये कोर्स फ्री में कहां से सीख सकते हैं फ्रॉम गीक्स फॉर गीक्स आर्टिकल्स देयर आर आर्टिकल्स ऑन हैकर अर्थ देयर आर अ लॉट ऑफ YouTube चैनल्स व्हिच हैव अपलोडेड द कोर्स यू कैन सर्च फॉर देम देयर आर एनपीटीएल वीडियोस अ लर्निंग जावास्क्रिप्ट फॉर वेब डेव सॉल्विंग डीएसए प्रॉब्लम्स ऑन जावास्क्रिप्ट इज अ गुड थिंग और बैड थिंग अ इट्स नॉट बैड आई वुड नॉट से इट इज नॉट गुड बट आई वुड सजेस्ट टू यूज वन ऑफ द थ्री लैंग्वेजेस सी प्लस प्लस जावा और पाइथन welcome neeraj why don't python developers get the same respect as java and c developers uh, i don't see anything like that what is the total number of question to practice for placement i think there is no particular answer to this question but for each and every topic you must practice questions until you are quite confident and you cover the different topics okay what is the work or what so basically the question is what is the role of dsa in development for example if you are making some project okay now if you want to implement a hierarchy for example you want to implement something like uh, who is the boss then uh, three people uh, who is the owner of the company three people directly reporting to them then people reporting to them then and a kind of tree a kind of tree structure so there you can use tree data structure and implement it right implement things out so in that way dsa can be used right uh, if you are uh, applying some filter where you know you search something and from the list you get that so you can apply binary search on the back end so that your search becomes faster and so on okay so in that way dsa can be used
for placement what topic we do need to cover yeah so for placements uh, all the important topics which i recently mentioned on the screen uh, you should do at least that much and this is also you know um, this is not a detailed one for example in uh, as i said in graph data structure there are algorithms specific to graph as well right so but uh, you must cover at least this much yes dp is also important what is the scope in data science with python uh, yeah so data science and machine learning is quite on boom like uh, we see a lot of people uh, going into that field why don't we give dsa questions in college i i, I didn't got your question exactly rohit can you please write it properly what will be better as a point of dsa or web development as a point of view of internship or placement i think uh, you know it will depend from company to company uh, whether they are giving more priority to dsa or development but i would suggest if you have time don't go with dsa or development do dsa and development okay do both why don't we have dsa questions in college so see college basically you know i would say because uh, you know you have approx 4 months of time in order to complete the course in that also uh, you know uh, there will be a limited number of lectures in that also some will be taken for class tests some will be gone for uh, national holidays some uh, students will bunk sometime professor will not be available and in the remaining amount of time they need to look at the academically fastest and academically so slowest person in the classroom and they need to first go through the theory and cover the topics at least the basic which is required so then uh, it becomes for them to discuss uh, in detail a lot of questions and other things so i think that's the main reason why the uh, dsa questions are not there in classroom programs how to start career in ai field from zero to hero and from where so to be honest i have not explored ai much so i would suggest you going through a youtube video or uh, article somewhere which explains you that and ai is a very vast field okay so in that also you need to be specific is there any high priority given to candidates who do dsa in java rather than c++ no not at all is there any specialization required in btech cac like i didn't got your question exactly from which point of view you are asking but usually no Can you please tell me how to get paid internship? So, 
see uh, first of all the there are some topics like seven eight topics which you need to cover first is data structures algorithms second is uh, projects third is uh, dbms fourth is operating system fifth is object oriented programming sixth is computer networks and seventh is uh, aptitude and eighth is uh, hr questions if you have covered these eight things you are good to go okay uh, now, in this also, the first priority, I think, should be given to projects and DSA. Second should be given to DBMS and object-oriented programming. Third must be given to uh, operating systems, computer networks, and aptitude. And last, HR interview questions, which you can just prepare one week before the interview. Once you are covered with this, and you, are, you can also look at different videos on YouTube of how to optimize your resume. Once you are done with this, now it's time to apply to different companies. At the time of applying, I would suggest you to be active on different platforms which shows updates about hiring. For example, Hacker Earth is there where different companies come to hire. Then Geeks for Geeks also has Jobathon twice every month through which people are hired. Then uh, what are the other things? Uh, so Geeks for Geeks is there. Then uh, uh, Hirist, then Insta Hire. Uh, then there are some YouTube channels which gives regular updates about hiring. So you need to be active on these platforms and uh, keep applying that's all uh yeah so i would not say pura btech but that's the important topics okay uh, like you might also have a course on mechanical engineering in the first year probably or you might also have a course on uh, basic electronics then there are microprocessors but that is not asked much then there is a course on, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think on cybersecurity or what is that course exactly called in which hashing and encryption and all of these are taught. That is also there, right? So you do not need to do all of that. Do we need to do an internship in the last year or do we need to prepare for DSA for a good company? Why not do both? You can do an internship and along with that, you can practice DSA after coming from the internship. Which will help you for placements. Any more questions? Why the first priority goes to BTEC only? I think that's not true, especially for off-campus. On-campus placements, sometimes they do that uh, biasing, okay? But for off-campus, I think uh, it is purely based on your uh, talent. What is the level of questions in interview? I would say medium, okay? They do not ask very hard. So on different platforms, you can go for on the DSA questions list and put a filter on medium and you can look at the questions. So easy to medium questions, okay? Okay, welcome Rohit. Yeah, any more questions, please let me know.
आपने क्या क्या स्किल डेवलप की है ओके सो फॉर मी आई टीच डी एस एस सो यस आई एम गुड एट डी एस ए आई यूज सी प्लस प्लस लैंग्वेज अदर देन दैट आई एम करंटली वर्किंग ऑन मॉनस्टेक प्रीवियसली आई हैव ऑल्सो वर्क ऑन जेंगो बट दैट वॉज बिफोर टू ईयर्स ओके सो नाउ आई डू नॉट रिमेंबर मच एंड इन माई फाइनल ईयर प्रोजेक्ट आई मेड अ प्रोजेक्ट ऑन मशीन लर्निंग बट अगेन इट्स ऑलमोस्ट वन एंड हाफ ईयर सो आई डोंट रिमेंबर मच अबाउट दैट राइट या so at present i am a bit in flow with monstech development and uh, dsa and i also taught dbms for gate uh, at uh, for gate preparation at uh, geeks for geeks are nahi bhai koi topper nahi hai sir on campus the interviewer asks basic questions but uh, not in off campus they ask difficult question yes off campus becomes quite difficult because the number of question uh, number of people whom they are filtering and the number of applications which they receive are high so they need to increase the level will you take more live sessions in future yes definitely we uh, from geeks for geeks every time we keep bringing some things okay so definitely if you stay connected on different social media platforms uh, you will definitely get some thing coming every now and then whether to start dsa with c++ or java or python uh, that is the confusion in school if you have learnt python go with python in school if you have learnt c go with c++ uh, and if you wish to continue with java if you know the basics of that that is also good okay but uh, whatever basic you have learnt before go with uh, that okay Uh, for a coding practice which one is more beneficial geeks for geeks or lit code both provides questions both provides solution geeks for geeks also has video solution releasing every night so i think uh, you know comparing questions cannot be a, a topic right I, like both releases questions only and i think the quality of questions is also good on both platforms and both are consistent how to apply off campus as i said first of all make your resume ready cover this seven eight things and then be active on different platforms which uh, shows update uh, regarding different hirings and all okay also look at some videos and articles which teaches you how to make a good resume okay monstech ka road map kya hai so basically i would say you first learn html css and basic javascript then you can learn maybe uh, bootstrap also if you want to learn then some jquery then you either go to front end or back end if you want to go to back end first then you learn node js and then if you want to go to front end you can learn react js also in between you learn need to learn advanced javascript like promises callbacks uh, etc uh, async await etc once you are done with that uh, during the back end you also learn the database like mongo db and all and uh, you also learn how you connect all these three things and at the end you learn how to host your website somewhere so this is basically a brief road map of learning monstech how to make open source contribution to be honest i have not done anything much in open source so i might not be the right person what's the best way or format of a resume it should not be too much you know uh, too many colors or too much uh, you know stylish type it keep it simple and uh, uh, make it using overleaf that's uh, uh, editor which you can use to basically you need to make it in latex okay so overleaf can be a good source for you to make it ओके महिमा थैंक यू
सी समवन इज सेइंग टाइम वेस्ट किया बेसिक बेसिक जान के अगेन आई वुड से दैट इज लाइक यू शुड नॉट इन्वेस्ट टू मच टाइम इन लर्निंग द बेसिक्स बट डेफिनेटली बेसिक्स आर रिक्वायर्ड सो दैट फर्दर यू विल नॉट टिक समवेयर ओके यू विल नॉट गेट स्टक एनीवेयर इफ योर बेसिक्स आर क्लियर सो डोंट थिंक इट इज अ टाइम वेस्ट यू आर फीलिंग इट इजी बिकॉज यू हैव गिवन टाइम टू इट should resume contain a photo or not that will not make any much difference in my point of view if your uh, skills are good enough you will be contacted if they do not found you relevant they will not contact uh cgpa matters or not for uh, cgpa matters for short listing but once you uh, are on the coding round or in the interview process then uh, cgpa does not matter much i actually it doesn't matter but while short listing it matters so off campus again it doesn't matter much but for all, uh, on campus they look at cgpa and then short list you right so for on campus it matters but try to maintain a good one where can we find gfg video solutions you can uh, go to uh, geeks for geeks practice website there you can see and for every question if you click on editorial you will also find a video solution or on geeks for geeks practice youtube channel is there geeks for geeks practice there you will get the video solution of uh, every problem uh, of every potd okay problem of the day please share information about linkedin profile so if you are asking about my profile then you can search my name that is karan mashru okay so let me write down my name here uh, okay so i have posted a comment uh, so you can uh, reach out to me sir if a person from different platform so which is the right way to learn a coding for a newbie learner so from a different platform by that i hope you are meaning different uh, field so i think again uh, ds could be a good thing to start coding when you are first learn a language and then go through the questions okay and start solving problems it will help you develop your coding skills a lot okay and when you learn a programming language so you will uh, know the basics of things and then start solving problems okay neeraj welcome okay thank you welcome yes guys any more questions okay so i think there are no new more questions coming let's wait for some more minute let's say 30 seconds or one minute more if there are any more questions what are the important points should we consider before starting dsa again uh, don't foc- uh, don't keep on learning language only be consistent uh, focus more on upsolving don't participate in competitions much uh, at the initial phase of learning and be consistent sir i think c is a basic and good for new learner you can start with c but c++ is almost the same okay so i suggest you to start with c++ rather than c is it compulsory to learn more than one language no it's not compulsory for example if you but uh, depending upon your application you might require to learn for example if you are doing mon stack then you need to learn javascript if you are doing spring spring boot you need to learn java if you are doing machine learning you need to learn python right so uh, from that point of view uh, you will basically learn multiple languages any more questions guys
okay so i think we can end the session here uh, again once again thank you everyone for joining and again i would like to give a reminder of the 390 challenge if you are interested to learn any new things you can uh, you know uh, purchase the course from geeks for geeks before 31st january and you will get 90% refund if you can complete 90% of the course within 90 days from the date of purchase okay and uh, it was an honor to speak at your college okay uh, yeah thank you uh, how last question how to show dsa in resume so you can write in core subjects you have knowledge about dsa and other than that you can link your coding profiles like geeks for geeks code forces code chef which the uh, hr or the manager who is going to look at can see and judge your dsa okay yeah thank you guys thank you for joining have a nice day